There's a dinosaur ahead. This is a story on Bongo Land. Several attempts were made to operate Dunlawton Plantation as a tourist attraction. In the 1950s, Dr. Perry Spurb released the premises from J. Saxon Lloyd for a park to display prehistoric monsters and had a number of replicas molded in concrete on wire, frames constructed. Here's one of the monsters right here. See him? <laughs> Modern day dinosaur. Yeah. Not as ferocious. <laughs> All right, let's go see if we can find some dinosaurs. There is a detailed map of this place with... Oh, look, it looks like broccoli. Points, oh, it does. Now I'm hungry. With points of interest along the way and... We'll leave some of that exploring to anybody that may want to come here with all the specifics of every little detail of the park. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you ever get down to the uh, Volusia County, Florida, Daytona Beach area, I would recommend stopping by here. Nostalgia, history. That reminds you of old Florida. Yep. When you're walking through here. Old school theme park. This kind of stuff always reminds me of the old Tarzan movies. Yes. The, Which we will at some point go to Silver Springs. Be going to Silver Springs, Florida, where they film Tarzan movies. So that'll be in our future. And an interesting note on the topic of Tarzan. In Titusville, Florida. Oh gosh. Oh, I yeah. see a triceratops peeking out from the jungle. Well then why are we going towards it? <laughs> Maybe the cage will the fence will keep it back. Triceratops. A plant eater existed about a hundred million years ago. All right. Are these cool sculptures? These are some pretty substantial sculptures too. They're not small. I can't speak to whether they are historically proportional, <laughs> but. Yeah, this, they're tall. This one's probably at least nine feet tall. So the sculptures themselves are made of chicken wire and concrete. And I don't know if John said or not, originally they were painted colors, bright colors. I kind of like them like this. They've got that weathered, ancient, yeah. historic feel to them this way. Yeah, still hanging in there. Pretty cool. This is kind of like a history book here. It still exists, so you know they're here. Even if electronics fail. At least you got something uh, physical here. That's true. With something in writing. That's why I'm a big fan of books. I mean, electronics are great and they definitely make your life easier. And I can fit as many books on a Kindle as I have in this huge closet full of books that I have because I'm, I'm a bibliophile, I'm a book board. But there's something tactile and primal about holding it in your hand. 
and flipping the pages. And I think that goes with all things that the more of your senses you use when you engage with it, the more of an impression it makes, lasting impression that it makes. Looks like they have an amphitheater here for, oh, it looks like a good place for a wedding. Look at this. It's a nice place for a white wedding. Yeah. Hey, copyright strike for that. <laughs> Billy, we cool. love you, you Billy. Care. <laughs> so yeah. Huge oak tree. If you live local. This is a great place for a wedding. I'm sure you could probably rent the venue. Well, let's go find some more stuff. Go find some dinosaurs. Did I finish my Tarzan story in Titusville? No. No. So, uh, yeah, interesting little fact uh, regarding Tarzan. So there were there have been at least two Tarzan actors that I know of in the old TV series. Uh, Johnny Weissmuller. He was a Tarzan. I believe he was the original Tarzan. And also uh, Olympic swimmer. Good views out there. Anyways, he had uh, a place in Titusville, and the building's still there. It's off of U.S. Highway 1, just south of uh, Highway 50 in Titusville. Yeah, we're getting rained on over here by the sprinklers. Mm -hmm. So he used to have uh, a place there, and it had animals and monkeys. Well, anyway, some of the monkeys got loose. What's that? I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not going to try and pronounce that one because I don't want to pronounce it wrong. Yeah, we don't want to destroy your name there, buddy. This must be a white bird as big as it is, huh? White bird of paradise. They get yeah. massive compared to the orange ones. That's a big bird of paradise. Big. There's the flower. As you can see, that's why it's called a white bird. Because it ah, looks like yeah, a... Right there. Looks like a bird's head, like an egret or something. So back to the Tarzan story. The reason why I know about this is my dad and my uncle had a pre-stressed concrete plant right next to it. Back in the uh, 70s, early 70s. And we used to see monkeys. When I was young, my dad would take me out there to the plant when he was doing work and I'd roam around and uh, I remember seeing the monkeys so we bring some bananas when we were going out there and that was fun you sure he just wasn't calling you a monkey might have oh I he probably <laughs> did you know why because I climbed the cement silo I was like four or five I had my cowboy boots in shorts and I was ready to rock and roll and I'm climbing the ladder. My parents were walking around the uh, the building, the plant building down below, and I thought it was fun. So I just, I didn't say a word and they are calling my name. Of course, I was too young to know they were really worried about where I was at. And then all of a sudden I'm saying, hey, mom, dad, look, come up here. And they looked up and yeah, I knew I did something wrong. 
but anyway, long story <laughs> short, I made it down. Inchworm. Oh, and look at the caterpillar right next to him. Yeah, they're racing. Yeah, I think the inchworm's winning. By an inch. <laughs> Spring is sprung. Spring started four days ago. Ooh, watch out. Cobwebs. Good matrix maneuver. <laughs> I see a stegosaurus. See, we're acting like kids here because we're in Bongo Land. We're having fun. <laughs> Stegosaurus. Do Stegosaurus. not feed the dinosaurs. I guess do feed the dinosaurs. They eat the knot. Little steggy face. Let's see how they supported the weight of that. So that the concrete wouldn't break. That was pretty cool. Pretty tall. Oh, yeah. A pod of dinosaur eggs. Oh. Yeah, it used to be thought that dinosaurs laid their eggs and then just took off kind of like lizard, common day lizards do now, but new evidence may suggest that they actually lived in family units and the eggs were protected. Wasp. There he is, yeah. <laughs> you might want to get away from there. <laughs> Whoa, there he is. So this yarning stuff is a practice that I've seen lately, but I don't really know what it's called, so we're going to have to look into that. They, Yarning? Yeah, where they use the yarn to decorate the trees and things. I think that originated in Yarnia. Yarnia? Yarnia. <laughs> Doing Yarnia and Narnia. That's what happens when uh, it's been a long time in between eating. Get a little delirious. 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 But I'm not hangry. I'm just not thinking right. It's kind of I'm fun. Surprised he's not hangry because I'm trying not to be. I'm in Bongo Land. How can you be hang hangry if you're in Bongo Land? It helps. Watch out, baby! <laughs> <laughs> That's about the friendliest looking dinosaur I've ever he seen. Is. He looks like Tigger the Tiger. <laughs> It's a giant ground sloth. Ah. Vegetarian mammal that lived 110,000 years ago. So if it's a sloth, you could, even though he's vegetarian, if he was a meat eater, you could probably get away from him because they're slow. And that's why they're not meat eaters. Yep, I just made up my own fact. Okay, the uh, T-Rex might not be here. Yeah, we haven't had any luck. Yeah, have you been counting how many we've seen? We, the sloth, the, so the tri triceratops, the sloth, the stegosaurus, and the dimeth. The small one, right? Whatever, the small one, yeah. So the only thing we haven't seen is the tri is the T-Rex, which we've been up here before. And we've taken pictures of the T-Rex, and it's on our blog. If you go to our website, um, freethemcgees.com, go to our Places We've Been page, and go down to Dunlop and the Sugar Mill Ruins. Um, that'll take you to the article that we wrote about this place. 
And you can see pictures of the T-Rex there because I'm thinking T-Rex may have finally met his untimely death. Yeah, I can't remember if we had problems locating it before. I don't remember. It's been a few years since we've been here. Yeah. I want to say it was close to the Stegosaurus. Okay. So. So. And anyway, if we find it, we'll, yeah. you'll see it. We're going to kind of just stroll around a little bit and see if we run into it. All right, well, we never found the T-Rex, baby. So I guess it's off to find pizza and Greek salad. We're gonna go find pizza and Greek salad. And a lot of it. Well, we hope you enjoyed this tour of the Dunlawton Sugar Mill, AKA Bongo Land, located in Port Orange, Florida. We will put the address and the website in the description below for anybody that might be interested in coming here and uh, seeing the gardens when they're in full bloom this is early spring so it's not in full bloom yet just but... kind of spider web but yeah <laughs> but it's getting close <laughs> so if you get a chance stop on by it'll be worth it Because that's where they have the world's squirrel largest oak tree. No, not the world's largest oak tree. It's the second largest oak in Florida. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's the second the largest first. oak in Florida, which is the only Florida in the world. <laughs> the first largest oak squirrel was at Ceylon Park. But you now you got me seeing in the world. The first large. <laughs> The largest. Uh, we're deleting all, <laughs> all this. Right. This is deleted scenes. Yeah. The largest oak in Florida.